IGC Pharma develops advanced THC-based formulations for treating diseases and conditions like Alzheimer's, premenstrual pain, and chronic pain. And the company is traded here at the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol IGC. And with me is the CEO, Ron Makunda, and also the Chief Financial Officer, Claudia Grimaldi. Great to have you here. Thank you. So let's, let's start with the drug candidates. So IGC AD1. Um, and this could potentially lessen the symptoms of Alzheimer's, right? Do you want to give me an overview? Ram, you want to start with that? Sure, Jane. Thank you very much. And thank you for hosting us. This is uh, our pleasure and it's really great to be here with you. The IGC-81 is based on research that was done at the University of South Florida. And we acquired this research in 2017. And the work that was done was on preclinical a lot of preclinical data, uh, including cell lines of uh, Alzheimer's as well as mouse models of Alzheimer's. And what it showed was that the active pharmaceutical ingredients reduced beta amyloid plaque, which is a hallmark of Alzheimer's. It also reduced neurofibrillary tangles, which is another hallmark of Alzheimer's. So it was effective in reducing both of those. One of the other things that it showed was that it improved memory in a mouse model of Alzheimer's. So it's very exciting research. So we took that research, we took that the active pharmaceutical ingredients and we created a tincture, which it's an oral formulation, which we then took it to the FDA and we were approved for a phase one trial, which we completed. Okay. And what did the phase one trial, did that confirm what the preclinical showed? Well, the phase one trial typically is about safety and efficacy. Okay. It's, it's safety, yeah, it's more about safety and tolerability Got it. rather than efficacy. So what we did was to look at this particular medication in three different doses. We looked at it at once a day, then again at twice a day, and then again at three times a day. And what we found was that it was safe, and this is in the Alzheimer's population. So these are individuals that are 80 plus or minus, you know, uh, sorry, 75 plus or minus, say, seven or eight. Yeah. So it was safe at all three doses, and it was well tolerated at all three doses. What we saw is that we improved the symptoms of Alzheimer's, not in memory only, but also agitation, sleep problems, and other aggressiveness and other things that so I mean that's really important my dad died of Alzheimer's just so you know so I lived through this my family did and um, there are you know especially in the late stages you know the anger the depression things like that so that helped with those symptoms you're seeing yes. okay that's exactly right and, and Jane 76 percent of Alzheimer's patients suffer from neuropsychiatric symptoms like agitation, anxiety, depression, irritability, even now. Uh, 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 and so there's a scale that measures 12 of these. And so we applied that scale, both at baseline as well as during the trial. And what we discovered is we saw a lot of positive signals. And so we then took all that data back to the FDA and asked for a phase two trial which is what we're running now. So okay. currently we are in a phase 2B, and it's 2B technically because we're testing whether the drug works on a much larger okay. problem. So it's been proven to be safe. Yes. Now you're seeing if it's effective. Correct. Right? Um, so best case scenario, when might this be available to Alzheimer's patients? We are hoping to finish the phase 2 trial by, say, January. Okay. It's a multi-site trial, so we have 13, we're, um, we're going to have 13 sites, and the trial's already started. We already have um, about four sites that are running the trial. We have three more under contract, and we're negotiating with another 20 sites. So we're in Canada and the U.S. In Canada and the U.S., these right. trials are. Uh, who is it being tested on? That's a very good question, Jane. The inclusion criteria for this trial is first Alzheimer's, and the second is agitation from during during their dementia for dementia in Alzheimer's. So okay. we're testing it on patients that have agitation. 
and agitations currently the what's used are antipsychotics and so they come with black, black box warnings and so this will be one of the first it will be the first drug that's not it will not come with a black box warning and it, if it works it will be very effective to reduce agitation and you said it was an oral medication, right? So that might be beneficial as well, rather than um, uh, rather than rather than a pill or or even an injection. Correct. Yes, I mean I can see some Alzheimer's patients not liking having that done. So, um, so would this be for people early stage, late stage, both? What are you thinking? Anxiety and neuropsychiatric symptoms increase as the severity of, as the disease progresses. So in the trial, we're looking at mild to severe. So we're looking at the whole spectrum. But realistically, we think the trial will have more mild to moderate rather than severe, because by the time we get to severe, the, and the neuropsychiatric symptoms are, they, they, they tend to separate families because because as a caregiver, as you said, your dad died of Alzheimer's, so you know about caregiving to Alzheimer's patients. It gets to the point where it's very difficult to do it at home, and so the individual has to be sent to a, um, you know, a nursing home. Yes. And that separates families. So right now the trial is being done with caregivers and the family member at home. So that's our population. I have a family full of nurses, so I think that yeah. helped while we were all going sure. through this. Um, why is this, I, I mentioned it was THC-based, so why wouldn't somebody just have cannabis instead of a pharmaceutical? Do you want to weigh on that? Well, a lot of people have asthma for that, Jane, and what we always consider is our drug is natural. So we are always going to get the exact same doses. And our pattern is from low doses of THC. So in this case, more doesn't do better. And we want to have exactly what we are telling you that you should have. The combination, the amount of When you go and get cannabis in a dispensary or a small catch or whatever you call it, you don't know what you are getting. You can get more, you can get less, you can get other recipients or other you know, components that we don't want to have. Yeah. That's why our... Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, I, and she, you know, Claudia actually said something interesting, which is the low doses. Now, this is obviously, so it's a pharmaceutical, so there's, it's been tested for heavy metals, it's been tested for everything under the sun. But the, the other thing is that our medication is not just cannabis, it's not just THC, it's THC along with another molecule. So, it's the combination that we show in the cell lines and in the mouse model to be effective. So that's the that's secret sauce. Yeah. That's the secret sauce. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not just THC. Yeah. So THC is one of the two. Got it. And the dosing is important, as Claudia pointed out. If you go, if you smoke a joint, it's more THC. This is ultra low doses of THC. So it's micro dosing. And THC as a molecule is biphasic, which essentially means at high doses, it does certain things. At low doses, it does opposite. So that biphasic nature of THC is what we're exploiting. Yes. So this is obviously a, a big deal, um, but are there any other drugs in your pipeline or are there any other applications that this particular treatment might be good for? Um, we have uh, another molecule in the pipeline. It's a non-cannabis molecule, which in preclinical has shown that it can remove beta amyloid, which is the plaques, uh, one of the two hallmarks. And so we acquired that from a university in uh, India, and that it's called the uh, uh, the Center for Advanced Research. It's in Bangalore, India. So we acquired the rights to that molecule from there. We're also negotiating with them for another molecule. We have an internal molecule that we've created using this combination from phase one and phase two, and so that's another fourth molecule. So. We've got about four different things in the pipeline, just for Alzheimer's. All for Alzheimer's. All for Alzheimer's. Okay. Well, I wish you the best of luck in your clinical trials. It's big for the company, but big for families, too. So that could be a game changer for people. Thank you so much, Thank Ram you. and Claudia, for coming in. Thank you.